The Candle Wick by Jennifer Rosner, illustrated by Christina Swarner. It was said that Bela Lichten's family brightened the entire village because every home, from the midwife's stilt house perched at the river's edge to the baker's kitchen house set at the very center, shone with the light of Lichten's candles. The Lichten family worked hard at their candle making business. While Bela's husband peddled in the markets, Bela worked at home, carefully dipping wicks of cotton into molten pots of bayberry and beeswax. She made beautiful braided candles to mark the end of the Sabbath, and thin, colorful candles to fill everyone's menorahs on the eight nights of Hanukkah. Whenever Bela used her colorful dyes, she thought of her friend Ruthie, who loved bright colors more than anyone else she knew. And since Ruthie was arriving today for a visit, Bela dipped candles with her richest blue. Ruthie walked along the riverbank on her way to the Lichten's house. She stopped to pick raspberries and to peer into a nest of swans. She gathered mushrooms for Bela's mother, and she even found a long white feather for little Erin. In her satchel, she carried gifts for everyone, newly knitted mittens that she'd made by herself. When Ruthie arrived at Bela's, she knocked on the door. Hello? Anybody home? She called. No one answered. Hello, Ruthie called again. She knocked and knocked. Just then, Ruthie realized her mistake. Of course Bela couldn't hear her knocks or her calls. Bela was deaf. She used a hand language and wrote messages on slate. She couldn't hear the sounds of Ruthie's arrival. Ruthie walked around the house. She peered into the windows until she spotted Bela bending over a large pot simmering on the stove. The window was open and a curtain billowed in the breeze. Ruthie reached in and pulled the curtain to the side. Bela immediately noticed the shifting of the sunlight. When she saw Ruthie, she ran to the door to let her in. During her visit, Ruthie helped Bela's mother make a hearty mushroom soup. She tromped through the woods with Erin looking for more feathers. With the yarn she always carried with her, Ruthie knit some new mittens for market. But best of all, Ruthie worked side by side with Bela, dipping candles. Ruthie was amazed by Bela's technique. By draping several long wicks over a single straight rod and lowering them together into the wax, Bela made her candles grow with perfect uniformity in color, length, and thickness. Most candles Ruthie saw in the village markets were mismatched and uneven. Where did you get this idea, Ruthie wrote on a slate. From you, Bela wrote, and she showed Ruthie her stash of candles packaged in pairs with a single wick connecting them, just like Ruthie's mittens, which were tied together with string. Ruthie enjoyed a peaceful Sabbath with the Lichtens, and at nightfall on Saturday, when three stars shone in the sky, she had the honor of lighting one of Bela's beautiful Havdalah candles to mark the Sabbath's end. The following day, they resumed their work. Several times, Ruthie heard knocks at the door. She paused to write on a piece of slate. I hear someone at the door. Shall I see who it is? Each time, it was a villager wanting to buy candles. I came last week, but no one answered, one villager told Ruthie. I didn't think anyone was home. This was my third time. I was about to give up, said another. As she happily helped each customer, Ruthie worried about the many Bela had missed. To have customers walk away empty-handed was bad for the Lichten's business. The morning of Ruthie's return home, Bela handed her a big bundle of candles as a gift for her family. Ruthie thought again about how Bela could not hear anyone knocking on the door. How would she know when people came to buy candles? Bela's gift was wrapped in brown paper and tied with a bow made from candle wick. Suddenly, Ruthie had an idea, but she would need a whole spool of wick to try it out. Starting with a loop around the curtain in Bela's candle room, Ruthie ran a length of wick to the knocker on the Lichten's front door. When she banged the door knocker, it pulled on the wick, which tugged at the candle room curtain. Bela saw the movement of the curtain and the change in sunlight. She rushed to the front door, her very own doorbell. Bela was delighted. She would now be able to hear her customers and her visitors too. She would be able to sell more of her candles from home. 
As Ruthie said goodbye to the Lichtens, Bela's mother invited Ruthie and her family to return in the winter for Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights, a perfect occasion for both candles and mittens. Ruthie could hardly wait.